just say we're live. I will. Yes, we may be live now. <laughs> awesome. We are. <laughs> okay, we are. Perfect. Live. It's a new method of doing it. So every week we keep going through the motions to find out what the best. We system keep trying is. new systems, and then so here we are. Yeah. Anyway, we're in two different places doing our thing. So we'll start. Let's get going. Welcome everybody to What the Friday. What the Friday is our weekly Birch and Birch online show where we talk about current events, our lives as a father-daughter real estate team, in what's arguably the world's most intense real estate market. I'm Bill Birch. And I'm Morgan Birch and we are the Birch and Birch real estate team powered by Compass. Um, first we have to start off by talking about the most obvious and important stuff and this week that's Black Lives Matter for sure. Um, we are two white people uh, with really great lucky lives so we don't have the right to say a lot but there is a quote well we should say but we want to say something um, because I stand with the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, there's a quote that Mr. Rogers used to carry around in his pocket. It's my cover photo and it was the advertising photo for this, this week's episode. It says, uh, frankly, there isn't anyone you couldn't learn to love once you've heard their story. And I think it's so appropriate for right now because we, as a society, haven't really heard a lot of the black population of our country. We haven't heard their stories. And I think what's amazing about what's happening right now is that people are starting to listen. People who've never listened to these stories before, never understood it before. There's some incredible educational books out there that people are actually reading now. And there are videos that are, there's a six and a half minute long video that if you're like, how the heck did we get here? Everyone's overreacting. If you're against what's happening right now, that video is a really, really good resource to look at how we got to here. I mean, it's only been 65 years since segregation stopped. So our country has a dirty past and um, yeah, it's definitely in standing with these, these protesters who are doing something about it. It's a tough time. Yeah. Understanding, and, little, you know, I think a lot of people felt like they heard but they didn't really listen. And now I think people are really starting to yeah. listen or hear the details of what's going on. And you can't argue the skewed, uh, skewed makes it sound like they're illegitimate. You the can't- The disproportionate? The disproportionate, much better word. You can't argue the disproportionate outcomes that society suffers. So anyway, and like you, you know, I'm a 57 year old white male. What do I know? It's hard to know what to say because no matter what direction you take, there's going to be a group that, damn it, edit it, criticize it. So yeah, and, it's and, tough. And also, we finally are listening to black voices the way we should have always been. And as whatever uh, people are listening to us, at least we can pass the mic to a, a black voice to talk about an issue that they know better than we do. So that's our hope in this situation. Well, um, at a minimum, we can all just work to harder to be good people. Yeah. I mean, the first step, right? Tidy your own right. house before you criticize someone else's. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Will you please silent your phone? Oops. Um, we, Speaking of that, so now we're, we're going to shift now to just talking about the markets and how everything's impacting the markets. Um, in Manhattan specifically, I did a lot of research on the Manhattan market this week. And of course, I'm actually really intrigued because this, I don't know how this would have affected the market before, but the Manhattan market is already so shut down. No realtors can show. Um, so everything's being done virtually, everyone's working from home. So as far as we know, the market hasn't been drastically impacted. Yes, it's another hit. It's another reason people don't want to consider uh, moving there or purchasing, but um, COVID-19 had already done such a big, taken a big swing at the New York real estate market that it's already down on the mat, you know? So 
So oh, an extra kick from some protests uh, wasn't really, didn't make that big of a difference. Um, okay, so this was, wait, what were you gonna say? Go ahead. Unless you're one of the ones that got kicked. If you drive yeah. down Fifth Avenue and see all the boarded up windows, I'm sure there are some people there that- Yes, that's true. There, There's, genu I mean, the looting and um, the economic impact that takes on the people who already were struggling to pay rent and now they have to fix their stores or or refill the contents, restock the shelves. And right. that's tough. That's it's tough all the way around. Be nice. yeah. We have to concentrate on getting back to normal. Yeah, actually, so I can start with that. I did a little research on the commercial aspect of this. Um, I really, a, a lot of my research I did by looking at what John Litt, who institutional investor ranked him as the number one real estate analyst for eight years running. So really trust him. He's a founder and CIO of a company called Land and Buildings, which primarily focuses on REITs, but um, they do basically every kind of real estate. So uh, he was home. Let's start with that. that. Um, this time switching to working from home. And when I say this time, this happened to Manhattan once before. When 9-11 hit, everyone needed to work from home for an extended period of time who worked near the site of that horrific act of terrorism. Um, this time, however, switching to working from home is very smooth. Gorman at Morgan Stanley and Fink at BlackRock and other large companies are reporting consistently high productivity rates for their companies at large and the workers who are working from home, which means office use is really likely to decline in Manhattan. Uh, and other major urban areas, which it already was. Uh, but now the, co the thing that was stopping, uh, or the best guess, is the thing that was stopping people from switching entirely to like two days a week in the office and three days at home or vice versa and staggering when people come home, uh, people work from home and we, people work in the office is the culture. It's you look down upon if you're not the first one there and the last one to leave and you're not there six days a week or five days a week or whatever. But that culture has already taken a shift and is likely to have it a permanent impact because we're so used to, we're getting used to the work from home scenario um, that has no judgment because it's forced. So there, we're like, it's likely to see an office softening uh, office demand softening. And the reason that applies to us residential brokers is that means that less people need to live next to their offices because the commutes are less daunting. You're doing it two times a week or three times a week instead of five times a week or six times a week. And that is part of the reason we're seeing such a spike in suburban interest, which by the way, is not new. For the past three years, there's been a 1% decline every year in Manhattan, as far as the population total itself, we're and we're not saying it's going to drop to thirty percent decline or something like that. It's probably more like three to five percent. But the appeal of a single-family home is even stronger now because you don't lose the brain trust or of New York City or the opportunity for a great job in New York City. So we already had a seller's market in suburban areas. We see them in um, New Jersey a lot, Montclair, Glen Ridge, Wyckoff, uh, Teaneck, lots of places. And we're expecting that to just keep increasing because of that uh, the shift in where people are working and need to live which is interesting. We though, we, but you know, the market in Manhattan is still, it's still a desirable place. It's still the center. It's still where people love it's the energy. It's the creative hub, it's the economic hub. So um, that it's not uh, like going to disappear entirely. It's just shifting. And we have a listing. <laughs> we have a listing in the Upper East Side coming. When is it coming, Deb? Do you know? Uh, probably within the next few weeks, within a month, a rental listing. Nice. And we also have mm -hmm. one. Up That's in on Tallahassee. Park Avenue. Yeah. And Park, I mean, which is a beautiful address. Beautiful like neighborhood. A, yeah. It's a coveted, be, saying you live on Park Ave is mm -hmm. yeah, it's nice. worth a lot. <laughs> um, and then there's also a, a Brooklyn penthouse that we have. And we're mm -hmm. assuming that we're going to see the same push we're seeing to suburbs 
similarly to Brooklyn. Yeah, I don't know how it's, um, I think that'll probably impact the Park Avenue rental listing that we've, we're talking about, but the, you know, we're talking about a penthouse in Brooklyn Heights. Um, mm -hmm. It's an outdoor rooftop garden space that goes with it. So those are pretty coveted. And as you, you, know, you were talking about the decrease in population in Manhattan, I do think yeah, yeah. we'll, in the long run, we'll see that replaced by more affluent people that use that exit and that reduced square footage cost to expand or make bigger homes. I think we'll see larger condos, larger yeah. co-op units, uh, mostly condos, but we'll see a lot more of that in the city where the more affluent can have more space yep. and um, it ends up becoming more for affluent people in the long run. Yeah, which is an I mean, a whole nother debate. We can have a whole conversation yeah, about it. We can talk about that. We won't do that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So if you don't mind, I want to, just to keep things moving along, I want to talk yes, a little bit about the, the um, New York or what's happening on the New Jersey side of the river. Yes. Um, you know, we've seen, what we're seeing is exactly what Morgan's talking about is there's, there are people moving out from Manhattan. Um, what we're seeing in Jersey City, Hoboken, basically the, the um, waterfront area, it's kind of neutral. You know, things are the number of listings coming on and the number of sales are about flat and even. So they're steady eddy. Um, I think last week we were looking at them kind of raising a little bit, but they've just flattened out. But then the suburbs are blowing up and everybody's going to the suburbs and uh, the yeah, number of listings, the number of sales that are happening, um, our experience with our clients and trying to get, you know, especially if you can't get there immediately and you have somebody that lives out of town, um, things are changing so fast that out of 20 places that you have on your list, you might get to see 10 of them a week later. So things are moving really, really quickly. Um, and you can also see it in the way the agents are behaving and the way the sellers are behaving because all of a sudden, once you're an agent with a listing and you've got plenty of people that are inter interested, you become a real pain in the ass to work with because you don't have to. I don't like that about our industry. It's like, you can still be human. You can still be social. When we were in a buyer's market, listing agents were like, oh, please, anything I can do to help you get in my place. I just <laughs> love to work with you. I can't wait. And now it's like, what do you want? Oh, I've got three offers. What do you want? What are you going to show up? Maybe, you know, I don't know. I'll let you know if we need you to come take a look. I just have a real not all of them. I mean, just, but you can tell there are a few that are, that are like, wow, I've got a lot of buyers here. I don't have to be nice to anybody. Like, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I'm a little ripped because I had a couple of those the last couple of days trying to get things scheduled. And it's like, oh, really? I couldn't tell. Can't tell you. <laughs> are you better? I'm, I can't I'm tell not, that you're better. I'm not emotional. I'm not bitter. It's like, it's active. <laughs> what do you mean? It's, it's in contract update the MLS and yeah. please don't be rude that I asked you for a showing because you left it. It looks, it looks like it's active. We should be able to go see it. I'm so sorry. I couldn't read your mind, but you know, be nice people. And that frankly, what is it? You know, 80, 90% of our eight, our friends are decent people and good about that. But it's those few that are just, <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, yeah, that's what that always sticks out. Isn't that funny? You always, yeah. Agree. That's Always right. remember the negative. So anyway, but that's what ha what's happening. Things are really moving to the suburbs. Um, if it has grass, it has a lawn, it has a backyard, it has a garage. Um, it's going fast and it's, and it's getting a little pricey. And most, um, I'm hearing a lot of, oh, I'm sorry, you know, on the good side, these are the good people. Hey, I'm sorry, we've already got three offers. I think we're going to yeah. accept an offer this afternoon. Yeah. Um, if you want to see it, you can, but yeah. We've got an accepted yeah. offer. We have a backup. We, um, yeah. yeah, we also, we've interested, we've had a couple that are overpriced and they've been on the market for a long time. So we're going to go see if we can get it for the price it should have. So, I mean, almost your best hope is to find something that's overpriced, been on the market for like a year. The buyer, the seller is finally like, oh, I overpriced this. And then you get it because- mm -hmm. Otherwise, you better be there the day it's listed, right? <laughs> or the week, I guess. At least the week it was listed. Yeah. Well, we have a, a a great friend whose name we do not want to mention because it would screw up the deal. But that we talked to in the last couple of days that had a listing at a much higher price that the owner had insisted on. Um, actually, went through two or three other agents thinking that that high price should have been attainable, 
didn't yes. get it. Was and like, then came back. Right. Yeah, didn't can't then came back and said, "Hey, you know, really, you were the best one I worked with. What's a reasonable price?" She shared that price, and within a week, boom, they're in contract. So, pricing it right. That's that's why you need a good agent, right? Um, exactly. Rich said, "Hey, Bill, back." Our comment section so far is Dad going, "Hey, Rich," and Rich going, "Hey, Bill." <laughs> Rich Cronin, <laughs> Rich Cronin at Prime Realty. He's one of our favorites. We literally mention him every, <laughs> every <laughs> single one. I like Rich. Yeah. You know, I was going to throw, we were talking about it because we've done a number of penthouse deals um, and we have, we're back at 77 Hudson. We have this new penthouse coming on to Brooklyn Heights in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to do a shout out to Chris Peters because Chris. Yes. Oh my gosh. The, I know what the, you're talking about. He's the manager of the 111 Fifth Avenue Element office where we used to office. Love love um, Chris, Chris and love Element. Um, but Chris, before he was the manager of an office, and, and Chris, frankly, is responsible for some of the most successful agents in Manhattan. Um, and he, for all of you that know, yes. um, Frederick Eklund and the Eklund Gomes team for a million dollar listing, He's he was in Chris's office. Um, but Chris was the penthouse king and that was his big marketing thing in Manhattan. And it was, it's just such a great story of what he went ad? through. Do you remember his ad? Yeah. Oh, I have his a ad was, image. I can't wait, remember the words. His ad, hold on. His ad was a flyer that he sent out to every penthouse in Manhattan or as many as possible in his area. I don't know. And it said, do you like to be on top? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was like some risky photo or something, but it worked. He got a bunch of penthouse listings. Yeah. Freaking genius. Yeah, he's, Gosh, he's an amazing, him. amazing man. So anyway, shout out to Chris. Shout out to Richard. Um, Prime. Prime. Good to see you guys around. And um, I think that's it. I don't have much more to offer. It's just a crappy, it's a crappy time and I'm <laughs> anxious to get out of it. You know, I'm anxious to not wear masks and gloves. I'm anxious to have people love each other and get along better and to take yes. some time to understand each other. And I'm really, do you mind if I ran it just for a moment? I, if, I, if I did mind, I couldn't stop you. That's right. <laughs> I'm just so ready for us to not be so angry, even though I obviously can get a little angry about things. Um, and, and start liking each other again. You know, things have become so divisive and people are so anxious to pick a team. Doesn't matter what the issue is. COVID is a perfect example. Um, you know, there's mm -hmm. so many examples that have we become so simple that we can't consider another side, that it has to be one team versus another. And it has to be, it seems like everything has to be a gladiator battle for the entertainment of the masses. And it makes, you know, it makes me think of gladiator when he stands in the middle and says, are you not yeah. entertained? And it seems like that's what our media though is also feeding us. You know, most of the media is, is feeding the most sensational pieces of everything to drive viewership, which makes everything seem like it's that way. But in our everyday lives, we're getting up, we get in our car, we go look at, you know, in New Jersey, not in Manhattan, but you know, we can go do a showing, we get along well with the doorman. We get along with the people that are selling their homes. We drive around, life's pleasant. People wait in line. I was at the building department this morning and the chairs were six feet apart. Everybody sitting in the lobby, getting along great. The world's I, not that bad, except what everything we see makes it feel like it's so bad. I think I totally hear you. And I, I think that being a good human is our first and foremost, uh, responsibility but i also think some change can't be affected without anger and and some people i mean you just described our lives which are so are great and i'm so grateful for them but a lot of people don't have the opportunity to live the way we do and right. i agree and so hearing their stories and hearing people justifiably angry and people being angry i'm actually i understand You're okay that. with it I'm okay with it. I think sometimes the squeak, the wheel has to be squeaky to get the grease and this wheel needs needed to be well, I think, a long time ago. Well, I think in regards to the, the Black Lives Matter thing, obviously, 
but um, still. Just in general, yeah. You know, yeah, you know what, you know, you know me quite well, you know exactly. I, what I'm yes, thinking. I do. <laughs> and I'm not going to go down that road, so I'll shut up now. So I think that's it. Do you have anything else you want to add? Can, should we let everybody go? This is. Yeah. Uh, is there but... anybody left? <laughs> is anybody watching it anymore? Uh. <laughs> uh, to our two viewers, we'd like to say thank you. That's right. Um, hey, please do actually, um, true, truly check you. us out on Facebook and Instagram. We really need to get Instagram followers so that we can do more of our marketing. Oh easier. my gosh. Yeah, we, we have a... Um, we have an Instagram that is for our team now. It's, 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 at. <laughs> it's, it's so intimate to us. We have to look it up. It's a Birch and Birch team. Uh, it has no posts yet, but it will today, you guys. Um, it has 15 followers. So if you could follow it, that'd be really helpful. <laughs> Uncle Bob. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> celebrities all 15 of them are celebrities um yeah. <laughs> uh yeah okay so thank you for joining us this week uh for what the friday that's right what the friday you never know what's going to happen except we'll um we always have a great time and i am so lucky to get to do it with you uh, right back at you people ask me about it and i'm always like best decision i've ever made in my life even on, on our worst days I don't regret it. <laughs> when we're not talking to each other, we get out of the car. <laughs> Go always never say anything. <laughs> Neither of us are good enough at the silent treatment for that to be very true. It lasts not, for maybe five minutes. And it's like, yeah. this is how I'm feeling and why. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, be our friend if you're watching this on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Instagram. DM us anytime. Email either of us. It's our names. It's first name dot last name at compass or birch, our last name at compass.com will come to both of us, birch at compass.com. And um, thank you again for joining. See ya. Goodbye. <laughs>